Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today we want to do our third video in the series for KB Motors. This video is going to show how to change the brake lining and do an inspection of it. In the previous videos, we've shown how to measure the wear of the brake, how to make an adjustment to the brake, and this will be how to remove the cover, look at the lining, and visually inspect it, and then how to replace it when it's determined that there's no adjustment left in it. KB motors can be found on hoists as well as travel tracks. If dealing with KB motors on a hoist, please tie up your bottom block before you do any work on the hoist. The brake cap on the motor prevents us from direct view of the brake lining, so we have to remove the entire cover to get a very good view for visual inspection of a brake ring. Under this cover we will find the brake ring. Brake rings have cleaning grooves and you can see there's an inner ring and an outer part of the ring. The rule is there must be groove remaining. Also, you want to find a dull grayish color on the outside of the rubberized brake lining. If it's glazed, you'll have to replace it because the thermal resistance properties of the lining have been compromised. Before I disassemble a KB motor, I'm going to note where my labels are. You'll note that the data tag will be next to the terminal block. The word DMAG cast into the louver should be readable from the mounting as it would sit on the crane from the floor. Before I take the cap off, I'll make a match mark so that I know how to line everything back up later. Everything is symmetrically designed, but they tend to work better when we put them back the same way that they were before we took them apart. So let's perform an inspection to look at this brake lining. Now that we have the cap off, you can see we have a direct visual view of the brake lining itself. So we're looking for the groove in the outer lining that's used for cleaning and moving air. There must be groove left to keep using the lining. So if you're worn down to the last bit, please consider changing it. We're also looking for a dull surface and not glaze on the OD of the rubberized lining. So if we determine that this needs to be changed, we can use channel lock pliers and remove it. Now, using channel locks will destroy the old lining. So make sure you have the new lining ready to go. Brake linings come in two widths, a wide width and a narrow width. Typically, a hoist will have the wide width to give you more brake torque for holding. Travel drives give less brake torque so the brakes don't slam on and swing a load. So, very traditionally, they could use a narrow lining. On the ID of a brake ring, there's a raised lip that goes all the way around the ID. That mates with a groove on the carrier disc. You are seated when the ring is flush and you can use a little bit of water on the ID of your brake ring. It's a lubricant, they'll put it on. Never use grease. We are looking when all is done, for a flush fit between the face of the brake ring and the face of the carrier disc. There are two types of carrier disc, a lightweight and a heavyweight. The heavyweight is steel. It's used as a flywheel in some of the motors. The place, because you want them to stop quicker, are made of aluminum. DMAX sells replacement brake rings and also 
brake ring and brake carrier disc assemblies. It's important to remember the outside taper should be 21 degrees for smaller motors size 200 and under and has to be 20 degrees for the size 225 KB motor. It's critical because it will not mate with the other metal lining surface if it's not true to that angle. We recommend on the KB225 that the assembly be purchased. If only the ring is purchased, you should remove the carrier disc and take the assembly to a lathe before you reinstall it on the motor. Smaller motors, it doesn't tend to matter as they wear in to the taper. If you have to remove the brake disc, we'll show you that process. The first thing to have to remove is the snap ring that's in the first fold group of thread. This is placed there for safety in case things sheared off, so this wouldn't necessarily fly off. We'll have to remove this snap ring first. Then, the adjusting nut, and then we'll take our brake carrier disc off of the shaft. Let me show you a detail of the adjusting nut that's inside the KB brake that's used when making an adjustment. So we take out the four socket head cap screws from the four clamping screw holes. We may use one of them in the fifth tap hole as a jack screw to break the connection loose when we need to make the adjustment. If that fails, there's a slot cut through the adjusting nut itself, and you can insert a heavy screwdriver and pry it apart a little bit to free it from its position to get it loose. This is what it looks like, front and back. Before I go further with my disassembly, I'll make a recommendation that at this point in time, you count the number of fully visible thread from the end of the shaft up to the adjusting nut. This will help you reestablish a position for the disc when you reassemble. Keep in mind that if you're changing the brake lining, it's likely, because there's not enough material left here, and it's likely had three adjustments previously. So you will have to turn the adjusting nut three turns inward when you put on a new lining, so expect that. Now that we've shown you how to disassemble the motor and remove a lining and disc, we'll just reassemble in reverse order. If you remember back to our previous video, we'll begin by putting two bolts in to hold this together and do a test of our axial displacement measurement. We'll put all four in after we've taken the measurement. We'll have access through the rear cover of the motor if need be by removing the fan loop. See our second video in the series for that procedure. We'll reinstall the brake cap, taking note of our match mark. Now that we're reassembled, we'll verify our brake setting 
with the method we showed in our second video in the series using our Allen wrench with the O-rings. We'll push up to the back of the cap, let the spring return it, and measure our axial displacement. Any changes that need to be made, follow the procedure in the second video. We thank you for tuning into our videos where we've explored how to inspect and service the KB motor. Look for future videos on the KM motor.